Hey everybody, I'm your host, Grande Gato, also known as the Big Cat. My cool cat, put your balls up if you're rocking with the Big Cat. There's a lot of things in this world that kill people. You got drugs, you got bad people, and then you got speed. Not only does speed kill, but it also kills cornerbacks. The Carolina Panthers <laughs> have just that very weapon to attack opposing defenses. DJ Chark, y'all. There's a Chark in the water. And it's not a great white. It's a DJ Chark. Let's talk about it. Let's get into it. If you see this face, that means I score. Now, I don't know about you guys or where you've been, but if you haven't been paying attention to Carolina Panthers training camp, you have been missing out on a show. Bryce Young has a new toy, and it goes pretty fast here. But Bryce is not stranger to speed. I mean, he played with Jamison Williams. You also had Mechie. And both of those guys were speed demon. But it looks like he found a new connection. Possibly a number one connection? I don't know. We're going to talk about it here. We're talking about DJ Chark. He's an interesting guy. I got to tell you that there. On the field and off the field. He's a big, silly, kind of quirky guy off the field. But he's also... He's a threat. He's a threat on the field. I mean, <laughs> he's a vertical threat. 6'4", 204, uh, 205 pounds, and the guy runs like lightning. It's reported that he ran a 4'3". He still does. And, and listen, if you watch training camp, I can see exactly why <laughs> teams wanted him, man. But is he just a vertical threat? Is that all he is? Can he do anything underneath? I mean, what is his flaws? We're going to talk about all that as well. I got to say this right here. For a guy... That's been on the injury prone side of football. He has a lot of potential. There's a lot of potential in him, man. But again, I mean, it's just been overshadowed by injury. He hasn't played more than 13 games since he left Jacksonville. The last time he had Jacksonville, the last time he was in Jacksonville, he, uh, he uh, had 1,000 yards receiving. I think he had eight touchdowns. Hasn't played more than 13 games since then, all right? Including 11 last year with the Detroit Lions. Um, it's scary to think what he can do in a full season if he stays healthy. You know what I mean? He's he. Listen, I seen this guy in person. I watched him 2019 at the Hall of Honor game where Steve Smith and the boys got let in, and he tore us up. But we still we still won against Jacksonville there. DJ Chark, speed, and not only his speed but his ability to make plays down the field with concentration is beautiful, man. I mean, it's like poetry in motion almost here. Um, and I, if you watch training camp, I honestly got to say that he may be our number one receiver. I mean, listen, you can coach a lot of things. You can coach, you know, how to catch. You can coach route running, but you can't coach that speed, man. I mean, at this point, it's almost pitch and catch between him and Bryce Young. And, you know, which, which is crazy to think. Or, or it's not too crazy because I never doubted his athleticism and his talent. I just always worried about his injury history. So we're going to take a look at that real quick. DJ Chark has been injured since 2018 and hasn't missed a year. If you look on your screen right here, you'll see 2018, he had a leg quad strain, uh, missed five games. 2019, he had an ankle sprain. Um, he only missed one game against the Chargers. 2020, he had a chest rib sprain um, against the Dolphins. He had a lower back injury sprain, September 2020. Uh, October 11th, 2020, another ankle sprain. November 25th, 2020, he had a chest rib sprain. December 2020, leg bruise, shin bruise. 2021, August, he had a hand fracture. And also September 2021, he had an ankle fracture. He was placed on IR in September 25th, 2022, Detroit Lions. So look, you know, I, I don't want to get too hype. And I want to give him his accolades and flowers because I think he is an elite receiver because of that speed. Like I said, you can't coach that. But doesn't make sense to, you know, crown him just yet. we got to crown him at the finish line. We don't want to crown him at the beginning of the starting line here. But there's no doubt about the talent. I mean, the talent's there. The, the talent's there, man. He has the frame. He has the speed. I mean, he has the ability to make plays downfield. I think this offense is going to be unique. Because we pretty much got every different type of receiver you can dream of. Adam Thielen, you got a receiver that's a possession receiver, route runner. I mean, literally, probably one of the best route runners in the game. He's also a mentor and a coach on the field. All right? You got DJ Chark, who's that explosive deep threat. He can make plays at the, at the catch. 
And then literally you got Lavisca Chenault, who's your gadget receiver. I don't know. I don't know if I want to call him a receiver, but he's yeah, yeah, he's a gadget receiver. He I don't know if I can qualify him as a got to catch more than 15 yards out of the field. That's my that's my saying. A little joke there, but anyway, uh, he got Lavisca that can run, sweep. You know, all these trick plays and stuff they're trying to do with him. They say he's going to be, quote, unquote, the new Debo Samuel. We'll wait on that there. But I see the vision. They're trying to have a little bit of everything there. But truth be told, the Carolina Panthers need a solid number three. And um, I don't want to go too much into it, but we're going to talk about Terrence Marshall in the next video. I think he's really been, so far in training camp, has been a disappointment. Not only him, I think Shy Smith as well. So to me, it really comes down to Jonathan Mingo. And um, uh, John Domingo and uh, who's that? And uh, Leviscus, that's it. John Domingo and Leviscus are pretty much fighting for number three there. And you know, Mingo's gonna be all right over time. So I don't know about default. Would you give it to Leviscus? It looks like they're incorporating him heavy anyway. But well, let's talk about what DJ Chark brings to the table that can really take this receiving core from you know laughable to. Now, it's not so funny. We're going to talk about that. I thank you for putting me on to that prize pick. You know, set up an account probably about a week and a half ago. I already won, you know, $1,000. So I appreciate that. You too can win big cash right before the holidays simply using prize picks. All first time users that use the promo code Keep Pounding will receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. Simply choose between two and six players and if they'll score more or less than the projected numbers according to prize picks, you can 25 times your earnings. Simple as that. If you know sports, then prize pick is the right play for you. Prizepicks.com, the official sponsor of Panthers Uncensored and Keep Pounding TV Podcasts. Hurry, the game is about to start. You don't want to miss out. So DJ Chark's strength is his speed, obviously. The ability to create separation, to be able to pull away from defenders. I mean, you're going to have to... You're going to have to shade coverage with your safeties over top. You're not going to be able to play him one-on-one. -on -one. You're taking a chance. You know what I mean? Unless you're facing like a Jalen Ramsey or a Sauce Gardner, you trust that assignment. But more than likely, him being so fast, it's going to draw that safety over top, which if Bryce is on his A game, he can read that, and he should be able to have a plays open for other guys. So that's the threat of having a, a over-the-top guy. And I don't want to compare. Let's, let me stop this. I don't want to compare DJ Chark to DJ Moore. Let's not do that, okay? If I'm going to compare DJ Chark to anybody, I'm going to compare him to 2019 DJ Chark. Because I this guy got Pro Bowl written all over him. I mean, this season, it's written all over his face. I mean, yeah. uh, big load on his face. I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's how talent he is. Just loaded with talent there, man. You know what I mean? But I'm not going to compare him to DJ Moore. Two different kind of guys. And I got so much respect and love for DJ as well. But... If you're going to compare him to anybody, compare him to himself. Can you beat yourself, top yourself? And I think you can with that speed. It's going to open up opportunities for others. The next strength that DJ Chark has is his size. He's 6'4". I think he's 205. He's a little on the scrawny side there. I can see why he's getting up getting hurt. Um, you don't want to bulk him up too much. I mean, I don't even think you want to bulk him up at all. I mean, that slim frame of his, you might, you might cut into some speed, but... You definitely uh, have a concern about that, you know, his on his size. But for his height, his height allows for him to pinpoint the ball at his highest uh, point where you can go up there and just go get it there, man. But ultimately, that's the advantage, you know. So Unless you're facing, like, a guy who's uh, sauce or uh, one of these guys that's 6'1", 6'2", you know, they probably could hang with you. But most of the time, you're facing old 5'10", 5'11", corner, something like that. And it just, it's lights out. I mean, so with that speed, that size... And not to mention his jumping ability. I mean, <laughs> if you're not six foot plus, you automatically just pretty much lose. I mean, unless you just hit stick him. If you hit stick him, you know, you might got a chance, you know, given his injury history. One of my favorite attributes is his ball tracking. We've seen this in training camp already. This guy can track that football with the best of them. Literally, Bryce Young threw an over the shoulder in the bread basket. And the fact that it was on his outside shoulder. When he was running, he was looking on the inside. He was able to track it to the outside, and it just dropped beautifully in there. I mean, to me, that's probably more important than his speed. You know what I mean? Because there's going to be times where you're playing guys. Let's be honest. You're facing guys that can match you with that speed. You're going to face guys that can match you with that height and, 
you're gonna face that. So Bryce is gonna have to do an unorthodox, unorthodox throw. He's gonna have to put it somewhere where only you can get it. Can you track that ball down? You know, we seen where you know DJ Moore. You know, and again, I don't hate to do this, but DJ Moore. He, you know, at times he has some crazy drops. I mean, let's be honest about it on some critical downs. So I'm going to be looking for D, uh, DJ Chark to make some plays where it's going to be pinned against the sideline. It's going to be, you know, you're literally going to track that thing. And he's great. He has great vision, great concentration down the field when it comes to locating the ball. And my last strength about DJ Chark is his ability to have yards at the catch. Literally, if you give this guy an inch, if you whiff on a tackle, you try to go for the legs, He's going to take a short pass or short catch, and he's going to take that thing all the way to the house there, man. Again, with that speed, it allows for him to do that. He doesn't necessarily have that quick quick twitch, that quickness, like a, like a Tyreek Hill or something like that. He has more like straight line speed, you know what I mean? Once he gets to the top of his route, it's bye-bye, you know what I mean? But if you, if you go up there and you half tackle him or you whiff on him, he can get up to speed quick. So, yeah, his yards after the catch makes him that much stronger. Now here's some of the bad about DJ Chark. He can be a little inconsistent, okay? I got on the DJ more about his inconsistent catch and his concentration drops. Well, DJ Chark is not, he's, he's not impervious to that as well. He can have some concentration drop. He can be inconsistent as well. But you know, but listen, it happens, man. I'm not expecting for him to go out there and catch a hundred balls straight. But, you know, he does have some times where it's like, you know, wait a minute, you should have made that play, you're talented enough, you got to question that there, and hopefully with good coaching and a good receiving core, holding everybody accountable, you got Thielen there, good mentor there, and you got Frank Wright, I think we should, you know, have less concentration drops, less, you know, blown assignment, stuff like that. The next thing that DJ Chark struggle with is, again, when you're this fast, one way to stop somebody that fast is to be physical with them. And again, he's 6'4", but he's only 204 pounds. If you're facing a real aggressive physical cornerback that can stunt you at that line of scrimmage, it doesn't matter how fast you run. You can run a 4-1, you can run a 3-9. <laughs> so, and that's something he struggles with. If a bigger, stronger, faster cornerback gets on him, put the mitts on him, and it makes it you know, very difficult for him, you're not gonna see that speed. You're gonna see a quiet day from DJ Chark. So, I mean, what can you do? I mean, beef up in the weight room, I guess? I, I don't know there, man. Or you can work, you know, on re release techniques and stuff like that. But that's probably one of his drawbacks there, man. And I'm looking forward to Frank Wright, Thomas Brown, to, to, to scheme him open. This is where I was talking about earlier in the year where, you know, if a bigger physical corner, you don't have, you're you going to have to scheme him open. Find ways to put him in motion. Get him a good release off the line of scrimmage. Scheme him open. But if you're trying to just sit here every play, just run him straight down the field against a physical, more aggressive cornerback, it's going to be a quiet night. His next weakness is his blocking ability. Again, it goes hand-in-hand -hand with his strength. You know what I mean? He's not necessarily the best blocker. If you if you got scheme in a run game where you're trying to get outside leverage and you're expected for him to have an awesome block, it's not that he can't do it, man. I mean, just like I said, he just he's not that physical. I mean, he's not that strong, you know what I mean? So I wouldn't try to scheme up a whole <laughs> run game around him or – you know what I mean? Like that, try to make him hold a block for more than one or two seconds there. But ultimately, man, that that matters. That matters in the run game. You know what I mean? That could be the difference between your running back springing for a 60-yard run or you not holding your block can be the difference between a five-yard gain. You know what I mean? And depending on what you, what the down and distance is, the quarter's like, that could mean the world. So something he definitely has to work on. And last but not least, his last weakness is, everybody knows it, his injury history. We just talked about it. Look, man, you know, it is what it is. I know he's probably sick and tired of hearing about it, but it's out there. And it's it's on paper, man. Um, hopefully, Frank Wright can find a way. I don't know if they got to manage his minutes. I don't know if, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how you protect a guy from being hurt that's been hurt all his career. But I tell you this, man, and, and I wish nothing but the best for him. And I tell you this, if he stays healthy, which I believe he will, man, we're going to have a great season. He's going to have a great season. You're looking at 2019 Pro Bowl all, all over again, man. But, I mean, I, I can't sit here and lie and say if he end up getting hurt, I will be surprised. It's, you know what I mean? So, prayers up, man. Pray you stay healthy, and I pray that you still 
get to show off that skill set and show how great you can be. I'm your host, Grande Got the also known as the Big Cat. My cool kid, put your balls up. Rocking with the Big Cat. Get in the comment section. DJ Chark, is he our number one receiver? I like to say right now, man, he's he's looking good. He's looking good. I don't know if he's our number one just yet, but he keeps on doing this, and he has a good preseason against Sauce coming in on joint practices and good preseason throughout the rest of those games. It's going to be hard to deny him number one. Get in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think. Subscribe, man. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. Share the content. Show that love. And as always, man, pause up. Keep pounding. Carolina on top. Forever, baby.